se preparó, se puso linda, su amiga y amaba. Salió de rumba, la tal y volvió, porque su novio ella le engañó. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so, so excited for today's video. So today we are going to be doing another story time. So uh, I was thinking about stories that I wanted to tell you guys and they're all really short stories. So I figured I would just kind of compile them all into this one video and it actually was requested for me to do more videos like this where I just kind of put like a bunch of stories together and put them in one story time. And since they weren't like worth making a whole like 15 minute video over, I thought this would be like, you know, like the best thing ever. So that's what we're going to do today. Oh my God, guys, it is literally so hot in my room right now. And my fan makes way too much noise. So I had to turn it off, but you know, it's fine. We're good. So, okay. So the topic of today's story times are going to be creepy clients. You guys know that I had a whole story time about one experience I had with a really creepy um, client where he kind of was like asking for my phone number and he was just a very oddball. And so I'm going to compile a couple of stories. These aren't necessarily stories that happened to me. These are more of what happened to my coworkers and what I've seen. Um, so yeah, first off, um, we have my coworkers. So when I used to work at a Supercuts, as I said before in other videos, um, Supercuts is majority men that come in there to get their hair cut. And then we have like next to men, I would say next to men line is like kids. We would do a lot of kids cuts and then we would have like women. So in this experience um i met these two girls um they were like best friends and they lived together and they were both young girls i want to say one was 19 and the other one had just turned at 21 so they were really young and when we worked into supercut when we went into supercuts they actually i don't really want to get into like their whole life story because that's just i don't feel like my place so i'm not really going to get into it but pretty much um they had a tragedy that happened and they were looking to get furniture because they didn't have any. I probably started about a month after they hired these two girls. So in the workplace, there was only four of us. There was the manager, there was um, the 21 year old, the 20 year old, or the 19 year old, and then there was me. And so it was only us four working there, but they had been working there a lot more than the manager. And so they had kind of told everybody, like, I feel like everybody that was regulars going to that Supercuts already knew their life story because they were pretty open about it. They would have the creepiest people, like just weird people. One of the girls, the younger girl that was like 19 years old, all the guys seemed to always be obsessed with her. And I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know why they were always so obsessed with her. Maybe because she was little and petite. She was only five feet tall and she was really, really skinny and petite and cute. Um, maybe that's why they were obsessed with her. I really don't know. But literally, she had so many creepy guys just become obsessed with her. So for one instance, they had this guy. He was an older man. He was married with children. And when I say older, he was probably in his 60s or 70s. He was a very old man. And he just would always make them uncomfortable. I had witnessed it a few times where they would like be, you know, doing like, hey, like whatever. They knew him by his first name. And he knew them and like recognized them all the time and he would always just like be like, can I have a hug now? Or like, hi! And they'd be like, hi! And they would tell me like, this guy would make them so uncomfortable and he would come in, he would say hi, want to hug them and they're like, I kind of wouldn't feel comfortable with, you know, hugging you. And he would still go in for the hug and try to give them like a little side hug at least. So it was always really, really uncomfortable when he would come in. He offered to literally buy them pretty much every single thing of furniture that they needed for their house because they were renting out a house and they would tell him no or whatever but he literally would like want to buy them everything and it was really really odd um they ended up like we ended up quitting we don't none of us work there anymore but he would come in at least once a month and he was bald so he didn't have any hair so i don't know what we were cutting but he would come in all the time just to check up on them he would like bring them muffins and stuff and some people might think that was endearing but he was just a little overly aggressive when it comes to affection i guess because he always wanted them to give him hugs and stuff and they would tell him no and they would tell him no don't buy us anything but he really like i don't like even my coworkers were like we don't know if it's like a fatherly kind of thing like he feels bad for us or if he's really just likes us and I don't know 
like it was it was just kind of weird um it was a weird situation he just was overly like wanted to always like give them a hug kiss them on the cheek like he just kind of he was a very touchy-feely person and even when they said no that would happen but you know it could have been fatherly on his part he was an older man but they still were always like no we don't want anything a another instance i had um with the same co-worker like i said guys were just like obsessed with her so at that same place um we had this other guy he was about 30 years old i guess he was an older guy he was married had children that were he must have been in his 40s at least because he had children that were our age and he would come in and all the time he would just like okay so my coworker that i'm talking about she had a really really pretty blue eyes and they were like really really like crystal clear blue you could see right through them they were super pretty and um this guy was just like oh my god like your eyes are so beautiful and he's like if i didn't have a wife i would totally like want to hit you up and like he would flirt with her and she would always say that she was so so uncomfortable um, because she doesn't like, you know, people that are married that keep hitting on her. And there were so many different guys that literally have done this to her. Um, while we were working there, I had witnessed at least five different guys that were all married and had children because they would tell us about their life and they would still, like, try to hit on her and try to get her phone number and, like, weird stuff. So, that was, um, interesting. <laughs> And another instance, this is like a little bit before, this actually happened to me. I was going to do a whole video about it, but I was like, nah, let me just insert it into this story time. So there was an instance where I worked at a Great Clips and the assistant manager of that Great Clips, she was really pretty. Um, she was a Hispanic girl and she could speak Spanish and this guy would only, he would prefer to speak Spanish, but he could speak English. But um, he would always come in, he literally had the hardest hair to cut ever. And he would always go to her, he would request her and everything. And he, she, she would tell me like, oh yeah, he always hits on me, he always tries to take me out on dates. And like I always tell him, no, I don't want to go on a date with you. And he would just keep like asking her like, you should let me take care of you. And she would tell him like, I have a serious boyfriend, we're in a very serious committed relationship, I don't want to like have anything with you and he would literally try to get with her and he didn't even care and you know and then eventually she ended up being pregnant so she had like literally she was like eight months pregnant she was huge and she was cutting his hair and he would still do this stuff so one day um i could feel him he you guys it's like when you go to Mexico, if you guys know what I'm talking about, or even if you go to like the Mexican clubs, like, you know the guys, the creepy guys that just like look you up and down and then they like cat call you like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. like that was him. So I could feel him like looking me up and down and I was like, okay, whatever. So the next time he came in, he asked if I could cut his hair. I had never cut his hair before. I don't think he's even seen me cut hair. He just saw me there that one time before ever. So I went up. And was like, hey, like, you requested me or whatever. And he had such a funny name. I know what it is, and I'm not going to say it, but it was a really funny name. He just, like, I start cutting his hair or whatever. And his hair, you guys, I kid you not, that was probably one of the worst haircuts I've ever given. He had such hard, thick, coarse hair to cut. I had, I don't know. It was so hard to get rid of the lines when you were cutting it. It was, yeah, it was very difficult. And so I'm cutting it or whatever, and he starts asking me, like, questions, like, um, like, oh, what part of Mexico are you from? And just, like, tr like small talk, but I guess trying to get to know me. So I would, like, answer his questions. I didn't think anything of it. I was cutting his hair, whatever. And that was it. He was like, oh, you should get my number, whatever. Th guys, this was after my first creepy client. So I, you know, I matured a little bit, and I was like, no, I'm not allowed to give out my number. Um but whatever and he would be like oh let me take you out sometime like I'm sure you like you're hungry we should go to the baile like we should go to the club or something and I'd be like no 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 I'm good like I don't want to do that and so that was that tell me guys tell me why like a week later the, the my manager who is also the general manager she was like hey somebody's like calling for you and asking for you on the phone and she gives me the phone and so I answer it and I'm like, what the heck? Like, who 
would be calling the shop to get a hold of me because my parents wouldn't ever do that. Like literally they probably text me or whatever. So I was like, what the heck? So I was like, hello, like, yes, this is Esmeralda. And tell me why it's him. And I'm like, why are you calling me? Like, why are you calling the shop phone? And he was like, oh, I just really wanted to talk to you. I really like, um, just really enjoyed talking to you. Like, what are you doing? Boy, if you don't get out of here, I am cutting hair. I'm at work. Like, what do you mean? What am I doing? I'm waiting for my next turn. Like, as soon as a client walks in, I gotta go. You feel me? So he, it was just weird. I was like, um, I'm at work. And he was like, oh, so like, what are you doing tomorrow? Like, just having small talk as if we were like, as if I was at home on my cell phone talking to him. Like, no boy, I'm at work. Like, how dare you call me while I'm at work on the freaking salon phone, mind you, which I think is so like rude and weird. And I was like, okay, um, I gotta go. So I hung, like, I like ended it. But it was just so, like, I feel like that was so disrespectful because, like, why are you going to bother me while I'm at work? Obviously, I didn't give you my phone number. I didn't want to talk to you like that. And you're over here bugging me about this. Like, no. No, don't call me while I'm at work. Like, why? Like, who does that? So, I don't know. I was like, that's not, like, if you're trying to hit on a girl, that's not the way to hit on her. Okay? Okay. That's all I'm saying. So that was the weirdest little, um, little incident, I guess. Um, but the manager, she was like, girl, yeah, he's like obsessed with Hispanic girls. And he just like, every time he sees one and he wants them to cut his hair. And I don't know. She was like, it's really weird. Like he's just likes the Hispanic girls. Like, random guys that were just a little off putting, but nothing was like too serious. You know what I mean? And everybody gets so offended when I say that where they're like, oh, you should never feel uncomfortable. But it's like. I don't I feel like it's not serious enough to where I feel so uncomfortable I need to call the police or anything or I need to call like for backup like a manager or anything like most of the time it's pretty chill um it is a little off-putting but at the same time I feel like they don't know they're doing it so I'm just kind of like eh whatever um but if it were to get a little bit more sexual which I have a story time for that one um which I will be doing and um that'll probably be my next story time is being like I feel like it was just really weird it was a sexual conversation while I was getting my nails done by my male text because I had one doing my nails and one doing my pedicure and they were both hitting on me in front of my mom and talking very sexual it made me really uncomfortable so that I will save that for another story time because that is going to be very very interesting and I'm excited to hear your guys' opinions on that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little story time of like creepy people that are hitting on us when we're at work. If you guys are one of these people, do not do that. Do not hit on us while we're at work. Um, I don't know. Don't stalk us but find a more appropriate time when we're not in a work setting to ask us out I guess I don't know just like take hints though like if somebody's not interested don't bother them but anyways I hope you guys enjoyed if you guys had any crazy story times then leave them down below I also kind of want to do like a different video series of your guys telling me your crazy story times and then I would either keep it anonymous or if you guys want like a shout out I can do it and we could do just a whole different video of my subscribers crazy client horror stories I think that would be really fun so if you guys are interested in that just DM me on Instagram to be featured in a video um, and I think those are so cool. I'm really excited. I hope that works out. But um, yeah, and then don't forget to also subscribe to my channel at 6,000 subscribers. I'm going to be doing this huge, huge giveaway, which I'm really, really excited about. So stay tuned for that as well. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm like, what else did I need to put in there? Um, but with that being said, I love you guys so, so much. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. Se preparó, se puso linda, su amiga llamaba, salió